بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I'm Dr. عبد الرزاق أحمد uh, uh, We are going to start topic of presentation today As we all know we had a series of lectures related to the prostate cancer and its management Today we're going to discuss the localized prostate cancer series or lecture one We will be having a couple of other lectures Today we will start the surgical management of localized disease <coughs> As we have earlier uh, asked or a little bit discussed briefly about the TNM staging, we all know that every tumor got the TNM staging. Mm -hmm. So to perform or do radical prostatectomy, we need a localized disease where the T staging is up to T1 or T2, where the tumor is confined to the prostate and it's not cleaved to the capsule or beyond the capsule. Sorry. So who is a candidate for radical prostatectomy? Patients without comorbidities, having a long life expectancy, patients having pathologically confined cancer and clinically confined within the prostate. Cancer that extends beyond the margins of the prostate but still seems amenable to surgical extubation with a wide resection. So the goal of this surgery is to achieve three things. One is uh, can cancer control, which is the utmost importance of performing radical prostatectomy and preservation of the urinary control, preservation of sexual function as well. So these are the three goals of performing radical prostatectomy. We have different approaches of performing radical prostatectomy. One is the open prostatectomy. In open, we have a retropubic and perineal. We have a laparoscopic and robotic. In robotic, there is a conventional or standard technique, and there is a red CS sparing technique. So what they say is that to have a good radical prostatectomy, you should have a very sound knowledge of, of the surgical anatomy of the prostate. Uh, the prostate had a venous plexus, which has a very important C. The prostatic venous plexus is a network of small veins that surrounds and drains the prostate gland of the male pelvis. It communicates with the inferior vesicle vein of the bladder, superiorly and internal vertebral venous plexus posteriorly. The prostatic plexus also receives the deep dorsal vein of penis as a tributary. That drains the venous blood from the deep structures of the penis the superficial branch between the prostatic ligaments lies outside the anterior prostatic fascia. We'll describe in a pictorial form, one by one, about these surgical anatomies. So this is what we have described. That's your, that, that is the pubic symphysis. The, you have a prostatic ligament here, which has importance these are very important uh, superficial plunge of the dorsal venous plexus. Mm -hmm. This is your prostate, and the capsule of the prostate has an importance as well. What is the most also very important is the neurovascular bundle, which we will describe where it lies and the importance. Mm -hmm. This is the blood supply of the prostate. We all know that the, the main branch uh, which supplies to the prostate is the inferior vesicle artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. Mm -hmm. It has also a minor tributaries or supply supply from the middle rectal and from the internal budendal artery as well. Prostate nerve supply is the it has a three different nerve supply: the autonomic and the somatic, the visceral sympathetic, and the visceral parasympathetic through S2 to S4. The nerves innervating the prostate travel outside the capsule of the prostate and then envelops fascia until they perforate the capsule where they enter the prostate. Mm -hmm. The branch to the membranous urethra and carboric venosa mm -hmm. also travel outside the prostatic capsule in the lateral pelvic fascia, dorsolaterally, between the prostate and the rectum. So this is a cross-section uh, picture of the, of the urethra with the, uh, on the other side, the prostate. Yeah. So here you have the striated urethral sphincter. We'll discuss the importance of it. And the, the inner side has the smooth muscle of the urethra. 
As we all know, it has a two types of fibers, the circular and the longitudinal, which we cannot see in this picture. On the, on the, the lower left diagram, you have the prostate. You have the prostate fascia. Outside that, you have the levator fascia, which has an importance, and you have the denivalis fascia on the, on the posterior aspect of the prostate. And this is the fascia which separates from the rectum uh, of the, from the prostate. So the neurovascular bundle lies posterolateral to this aspect of the prostate. If you see, this is your denivalis fascia, the green is the uh, levator, and the, this one is the prostate. So the main bulk of the neurovascular bundle lies on this. The prostate fascial covering, uh, which we have now described uh, on, a, on a picture form, we, we, we have seen that the, the plenum velaris fascia covers posterior surveys of prostate and seminal vesicle. It has a dense at the base and a thin at the apex, and it must be excised. The prostatic fascia anteriorly and laterally is a continuum with the bronch prostate bronchima and anteriorly lies the deep venous uh, plexus and the centurinous plexus. Any question up the law? We'll ask questions. Does anyone tell us what is Santorini San Taurini's plexus? Anyone? It's the importance. Why we are discussing this plexus? I think you all have done your uh, oncological rotation. So these are the the, the, dots, the prostatic venous plexus, which we're discussing, also called the Santorini plexuses. And uh, we will discuss in a pictorial form the importance of these plexuses. And there is one feature you mentioned, just Yes, sir. Previous one? No, no, no. Yes, yes. Um, yes. yes. And what is the surgical importance of fascia of Denonvillers? There are there are two fascias associated with the prostate. Posteriorly, as you mentioned, fascia of Denonvillers and anterior yes. What is the importance of fascia of Denonvillers? so it is a tough structure which uh, separates the pressure from the rectum. So importance care. If you are doing anterior resection, in anterior resection of the rectum, and you keep this fascia intact, it means you will not destroy the prostate and capsule and the highly vascular area around it. Similarly, if you operate on prostate, either robotic, laparoscopic, or an open, and if you breach fascia of denivellum, then there is a very high chance that you may cause damage to the <coughs> rectum. Because just behind it is the rectum. So if you want to keep rectum intact, you have to breach fascia of denivellum center. Yeah. And it is quite tough structure. You are very right. It's like you have the typical for beers. It's a very important landmark as far as the lower deep, narrow ending that the surgical aspect is concerned. Nobody told me about the Santorini plexus. प्रोस्टेट की सर्जरी करने जा रहे हैं वहां वीनस प्लेक्सस आपके सामने है तो क्या होगा आप उसको काट देंगे तो क्या होगा कहां से काटेंगे प्रोस्टेट को फ्रंट पे है ना एंटीरियर लेटरल स्विच प्लेस ऑन एंटीरियर लेटरली और आप इसके ऊपर ही कट लगा देंगे तो कैसे होगा कॉम्प्लिकेशन होगी ना ब्लीडिंग करेगा 
इसको कंट्रोल करना ज्यादा जरूरी है अगर आप सर्जी करने जा रहे हैं ठीक है और ये रिलेट कहाँ से करती है ये कहाँ जाती है इसकी एक और इम्पोर्टेंस है एग्जैक्टली वर्टिब्रल उससे जो है कनेक्टेड होती है इसीलिए क्योंकि मेटास होती है बिकॉज ऑफ दीज वीनस प्लक्सेस दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है so now we will start describing the 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 surgery different approaches the open starting from the retropubic radical prostatectomy and we will go one by one to the perineal and finally the the most advanced way of doing radical prostatectomy which is the robotic way so usually surgery is being deferred for 6 to 8 weeks after biopsy and 12 weeks after trp this helps to preserve the neurovascular bundle and prevents rectal injury So usually we do pelvic lymph node dissection in the radical pros- pro- pro- prostatectomy when uh, before the radical in the uh, at the time of radical prostatectomy if we want to have the nodal staging yes there is a limited pelvic lymph node dissection and there are there is extended pelvic lymph node dissection in the limited uh, what we uh, remove are the the nodes close to the take to the prostate typically the area defined by the external iliac vein anteriorly the obturator nerve posteriorly the origin of the internal iliac proximally and the cuboid ligament distally the bladder medially and the the pelvic side or laterally we are not taking these structures we are just taking the nodes so these are the landmarks for the limited pelvic lymph node dissection and extended it is including what we have d- described on the limited uh, lymph node Uh, dissection with the the area defined limit under the flow, uh, lymph node from the away from the pro, uh, the prostate typically the area defined with the prostate posterior boundary as the floor of the pelvis what is the importance of these lymph nodes in radical prostatectomy the importance hai positive aa gayi hai to upgrade ho gaya hai kya karenge कुछ तो बोलो एग्जैक्टली एक्सटेंडेड इसीलिए करते हैं या लिमिटेड इसीलिए करते हैं अगर एक आध भी पॉजिटिव आ गई तो आप पोस्ट ऑप पोस्ट ऑप का प्लान कर सके इसीलिए निकालते हैं क्योंकि पॉजिटिव आने के चांसेस होते हैं so this is how they do the limited uh, uh, they do the dissection of the uh, these lymph nodes but they start with the they preserve the soft tissue over the external iliac artery but they they dissect the, up to the femoral canal inferiorly and then they preserve the obturator nerve and then obturator and hypogastric vessels are skeletonized so we'll start with the retropubic approach this is uh, the somehow the conventional or standard way of doing open radical prostatectomy and incision is made in the endopelvic fascia and division of the pubic prostatic ligament is done then the juncture between the apex of the prostate and the anterior surface of the dvc the deep venous plexus is being exposed the pubo urethral component of the complex is intact in the and to preserve anterior fixation of the striated right sphincter to the pubis then the ligation of the deep venous complex uh, is it must be done and the goal is to divide the complex with a minimal blood loss while avoiding damage to the striated right sphincter an inadvertent advertent entry into the anterior apex of the prostate figure of 8 horizontal mattress suture on uh, taken on the deep venous complex which is then tied and, and another on anterior surface of the prostate is taken to reduce bleeding from the proximal dorsal venous plexus we'll have a few pictures and then we will try to demonstrate further if you see this is what we have been describing earlier uh the surgery is being taken the, on the this is the pubic symphysis these are the, the where the deep venous complex are lying and this is how the the, the surgery is being taken figure of eight surgery then pass into perichondrium of symphysis i'm not sure if this is practice for everyone but i think this will again depend on varies from surgeon to surgeon if they if they take with the very con precondrium or not of the symphysis then overswing of the proximal dorsal vein 
And then after tying, the dorsal vein complex is being divided and followed by the division of the striated sphincter. And this is done in an attempt to preserve more sphincter going laterally close to the prostate may damage the neurovascular bundle. To prevent this, the division is done midway between the apex and the, apex and the distal end. It was believed that the neurovascular bundle always travel in a straight line laterally, but sometimes accessory vessel may pull it medially and cause injury. So this is the overseeing of the striated urethral sphincter and dorsal vein. Again, on, uh, on the proximal dorsal vein. And now, but this is the, uh, the, the cutting of the anterior two-third of the urethra, uh, dividing of the anterior two-third of the urethra. Once the prostate is being, uh, the, the structure is being removed, and at the end, you have to do a urethral anastomosis once you, uh, the, you in, in block of the, of the, of the targeted tissue. What they do here is that the anterior two-third of the urethra is divided. On the right side, as the right angle protects the neurovascular bundle. Then initial suture are is placed at 12 o'clock. Clamp placed between the posterior striated urethral sphincter and the neurovascular bundle. Yeah. And this is being placed to, to protect the neurovascular bundle. Basically, they are trying to remove the prostate and they had done it. And uh, now they are taking the uh, initial suture to later on place the uh, uh, urethro uh, vesicle anastomosis. So this is basically a stay suture to uh, uh, because the urethra can retract. So you have to take a uh, stay suture so it will help you. And for the... Uh, uh, Ligated those uh, dorsal venous complexes on the uh, that was already uh, going towards the bladder. So this structure you are uh, this area you are seeing with the uh, sutures is basically basically that area. Okay. So then you basically take. देखा है radical prostatectomy या normal prostatectomy से ही जिसने देखा है उसको ये समझ आ रही होगी कितनों ने देखा है. बस इतनों में से सिर्फ इतनों ने देखा है तो मैं रिकमेंड करूंगी रिकमेंड करूंगी कि सारे देख ले फिर नहीं जितनी हुई है उनमें तो काफी लोग रहे हैं इंटरेस्टेड कितने हैं सवाल ये भी है नॉर्मल प्रोस्टेक्टिवी भी तो होती है ना इट्स नॉट अबाउट रेडिकल ओनली द सेम प्रोसीजर लाइक नॉर्मल प्रोस्टेक्टिवी यू आर डूइंग इन ओपन प्रोसीजर देर इज नॉट नथिंग डिफरेंट एक्सेप्ट दैट आप जो है ना उसमें न्यूरोवास्कुलर बंडल को सेपरेट करें चीजें देख रहे लिटिल डिफरेंस इसमें सिर्फ आप पूरा जो है ना यूरेथ्रा को जो है पूरा काट देते हैं उसमें आप जो है ना पार्शल काटते हैं प्रोसेट निकालते हैं उसमें खाली तो आप उसको पार्शल काटते हैं इसमें आपने काट दिया हम रेडिकल करते प्रोस्टेट तो काटना है ना तो आपके ख्याल में हमेशा न्यूरो बंडल को सेव करना चाहिए अगर यंग एज पेशेंट हो प्रोस्टेटिक सीए के साथ और पेशेंट चॉइस पे है ठीक है जो जो सर्जन है वो अक्सर पेशेंट को चॉइस देते हैं हमारा टारगेट है कि बंडल लेकिन उसके साथ साथ वो मरीज को ये भी बताते हैं कि दैट न्यूरोवेस्कुलर बंडल कैप्सूल से टू और थ्री मिलीमीटर के रिलेशन में होता है इसका मतलब है कि यू हैव टू ऑपरेट इन दैट टू टू थ्री मिलीमीटर स्पेस फॉर दैट न्यूरोवेस्कुलर बंडल एंड रिमूव द होल प्रॉफिट इन दैट अटैम्प देर इज मोर चांसेस ऑफ पॉजिटिव मार्जिंग रीजन
So you have to discuss this point to the patient. Your objective, your target is to save the universal button, but if there is loss of planes, and if you think that it is beyond the limit of capsule, then you may take the so secondly, we do release of the uh, levator fascia over the neurovascular bundle up to the apex, as you can see the picture. So the complete section between the urethra and the bladder. Midland dissection of denim valeris fascia exposing the rectum is uh, shown to you here. And uh, then we we clap we clip and divide the apical plants, and then the posterior plants are clipped. The dinovirus fascia is dissected off from the rectum. And you can see the very close to the rectum. Yes, there is a high chance of a rectal injury. You must know the anatomy. So the, the final thing is to divide the, the division of the bladder neck and separation of seminal vesicles, followed by the vasico urethral anastomosis. Here we start the uh, applying spongy stick pressure on, on the catheter. And then here you can also see the lateral pants are clipped of the plexus. Then the anterior bladder neck is incised followed by the lateral bladder neck wall and then divided. The vase is, is clipped and then divided. Then the bladder neck is closed in a tennis rocket fashion. The mucosa is inverted with 4-0 chromic. Two omic zones which are placed two centimeter lateral to the bladder neck. Also, the bladder is preparing for the anastomosis with the urethra. Yes. The surgery is forming an anterior hood of tissue of a bladder neck. Here, the bladder neck is exposed by traction while suturing corresponding positions on bladder neck. Uh, the, the, so, it's basically urethrovesical anastomosis. We have started here. And you can have the interrupted as well as continuous fashion, and again, depends on the surgery's preference. And uh, what we conclude now after the anastomosis, uh, and we were trying to demonstrate, is the retropubic approach. As I have already earlier mentioned, that there is it's not the only way of doing radical prostatectomy. We have other ways, like the perineal approach, which is older than the retropubic approach of the radical prostatectomy. First time it was done in 1905 by Hampton Young, described by Hampton Young, and then in 1939, Pelt and colleagues modified the procedure until the description of radical retropubic approach by Walsh. Mm -hmm. The perineal approach offers visualization of the urethral dissection and anastomosis, resulting in an excellent urinary continence similar to the result achieved through the laparoscopic approach. Radical Perineal prostatectomy demonstrates the proved long-term cancer control with low mobility and rapid convalescence. So the patients for the perineal are the patients with few uh, additional indications, such as the renal transplanted patients, those with severe inflammation secondary to placement of synthetic mesh for repair of hernia, the morbidly UPs who may not uh, be amenable to uh, radical retropubic prostatectomy typically may undergo prostatectomy by the perineal approach. Uh, what I would like to add here is that no one does perform the perineal approach, and uh, I think maybe even our the most seniors, uh, most senior faculty have not even seen the perineal approach in their life. Uh, this I is. I think the basic reason is uh, uh, there we we have to go for the lymph node dissection as well. Yes. So normally we uh, with this approach we will do uh, we will go for the two incisions basically. So with one incision they usually go and uh, try to do the retrofit. Yes, as Madam mentioned that one of the drawbacks of this is if you want to perform the the lymph node dissection at the same time, 
So this uh, uh, perennial approach is not good because you have to make two incisions. This is the drawback, basically, this is the drawback. In this approach. So we have the laparoscopic and robotic assisted laparoscopic radical prostectomy and the pelvic lymph node lymphadenectomy. Schechler and colleagues performed the first successful, successful laparoscopic radical prostectomy in 1997. The Vinci quickly became the dominant robotic surgical device in the field of urology by incorporating sophisticated twisted technology at the terminal ends of the robotic instruments. This robotic system offers surgeons the ability to operate, dissect, and suture with the facility of human wrist defense. Nonetheless, robot assisted laparoscopic prostectomy has virtually replaced the laparoscopic radical prostectomy in the States, and the overwhelming majority of new surgeons have adopted robot assisted laparoscopic prostectomy as their preferred surgical approach for prostate cancer management. So advantage here is you have a minimal bleeding, uh, faster return, normal daily activities, reduced hospital stay, lower blood transfusion rates, improved preservation of physical appearance, reduced risk of post-surgery incontinence, control over urinary incontinence and impotency. Positioning of the patient. Uh, we place supine position in steep Trendelenburg. Arms are hands carefully tucked and padded at the sides. Sequential compression stocking devices are placed on both legs and activated. As you can see, this is what we are describing earlier, how we position for robotic surgery. This is how we place the ports in robotic. You have to place 5 mm ports. In, in one in the right hypochondrium and 12 mm camera port over the umbilical region, 12 mm at the right left quadrant, 8 mm robotic ports into two in right and left red clavicular lines, about 17 centimeter from pubic symphysis, 8 mm robotic port in left lower quadrant. So there is a in, in robotic, as we earlier mentioned, there are two ways. One is the, the conventional standard nerve-sparing robot-assisted radical prostectomy, and that's what they call anterior approach. And there is another one uh, which they call the retzius-sparing radical assi robotic-assisted radical prostectomy. Can anyone tell us the benefits of retzius-sparing robot-assisted radical prostectomy? Basically, why, why we want to spare this space? What is the importance of that? Anyone, voluntarily. So the benefits of retia sparing robot-assisted radical prostectomy is that you have minimizing the bleeding. The veil of Aphrodite is saved. Mm -hmm. And here comes another question. Does anyone, can anyone tell us what is the veil of Aphrodite? Basically, this is a structure. And uh, in the lateral prostatic fascia, you have a uh, few nerves. And there is a, I believe that it's not only the sparing the, the, the neurovascular bundle, which saves the preservation of the incontinence as well as the sexual function, mm -hmm. but there are the saving of these small, small nerves will uh, take part of the preserving these two uh, uh, the continents as well as the sexual life of the patient. As that, that, that is the reason they have said that they have done a study, we'll describe it, comparing both procedures and the, the benefits of these two goals. Mm -hmm. So th this is a, a pictorial explanation of the two ways of robotic approach. One is the conventional technique, what is the nerve sparing, uh, mm -hmm. and the one is red seal sparing technique. You can see there are structures which has been uh, preserved here. On the red seals, you are not, you are preserving or uh, leaving intact the pubic ligament, you are not touching the endopelvic fascia, and the DVC also left intact. You are not ligating it. Meanwhile, on the conventional technique, it's like the retropubic way, where you are cutting and losing all these structures and increasing the chances of bleeding as well as damage to the neurovascular bundle. This is a study done in 2021 of 500 patients. They have done, uh, they compared the two procedures. Uh, 
they have seen there was immediate outcome were better with the let's see sparing robot assisted radical prostatectomy but there were no differences in the long-term patient outcomes between the two procedures when it comes to the cancer control because we earlier mentioned radical prostatectomy has three reasons to be performed number one is cancer control and that's the utmost importance number two is the prevalence of preservance of the uh, the continence and the, number three the sexual life of the patient comparing in the first one they, they don't have any differences but getting uh, immediate outcome like continence and this they mentioned that the red sea sparing has a better outcome complications overall is you have an intraoperative and extra or postoperative intraoperative you might have hemorrhage obturator nerve injury urethritic and rectal injury extra extraoperative or postoperative bleeding thromboembolic event bladder neck contracture urinary incontinence erectile dysfunction complications related to the position this is specific for the for the robotic and and then the vascular and bowel injury rectal injury and the rest is almost similar to the other approaches like thromboembolic complications anastomotic complications bleeding and transfusion and equipment malfunction like okay the take home message here is we need to have a proper patient selection the age is very important the comorbidities are very important patient is must be uh, not having any comorbidities the mri uh, must be analyzed very well before going to the procedure a very sound knowledge of the surgical anatomy is the most important thing and the retrospective is the pathology review is very important because once you do the lymph node dissection the it might they might come positive and then your plan may change and um, thank you so much yeah